<laughs> How'd that get your attention? Okay, this one's going to be a bit like the one you may not have seen it yet, but it's to help you with selecting the right core springs for a suspension lift kit, particularly on the Prados, but there's going to be information that's general that helps you decide um, and make an informed decision about what springs you might need. So we're going to go through some of the most common coil springs we use on the uh, Prados, both 120 and 150. Uh, sorry guys, we're not going to be talking about the 90 series. Haven't seen one here for uh, at least a couple of years. Um, look, you know, we've done a few lift kits on those. All I'm going to say is the rear shock's really hard to get to at the top. Um, the Dominance's gear seems to work out all right in those. Fairly reliable, the twin tubes if you like. Um, but look, since 2003, it's nearly 20 years now, up until 2020. Um, most of the suspension we've done, changed, used, whatever. Um, is predominantly 120s and 150s. So we're just going to share all that information so it helps you decide, you know, whether you're buying the stuff direct off Dobinson somewhere else or you choose to support us for giving you this information. Um, we appreciate that, but the information's here and free for you anyway. So um, we'll just go through a few of the general... First thing I want to say, like in the video, helping you select the rear springs, which is a lot more simple. It's a little bit more complicated in the front. I'll try and keep it short, I'm talking fast, but there's lots of information. So maybe if you haven't got time right now, just save it, watch it later. But if you've got a minute, let's do it. And it's always wise to watch it a few times anyway, because as I said previously, you only retain 10% of what you hear and what you read. So it's always worth reading and watching two, three, four times to really get a good uh, a picture. And you watch all the other suspension videos too, and it all comes together, like I said, that big million piece jigsaw puzzle. So spring part numbers, they generally start with so that box there, uh, you can see it says C59, you probably can't see, but it says C59327. We don't use the C59 part, because they don't all start with that, but most of them start with that, so it's law whatever. We just go through, in the, like in the other video, we said 327s, 329s, whatever. Same box, wrong spring, it doesn't matter. It's just what was closest that I threw out there to get your attention, and this is what we're talking about. So the part numbers most commonly used on the front of a 120 Prado are things like... Uh, 300, a 302, and a 314. So that's on a 120 Prado. Sometimes you can go down to 296s. It just depends, you know. And the Hilux fronts, they use similar part numbers as well. The spring seats are different heights. I don't think that everything's interchangeable. And if you've got other questions, please watch our other suspension videos first because there's a whole heap of info there that may just answer those questions. So don't watch one video and then or you've got a question about something completely off topic and put it on this video because it's just off topic it's probably you know it's not going to get seen or get answered if you know what i mean um so 120 prado 300s so c59 300s 302s 314s um, and then in the 150 prado you've got some coils that are a little bit heavier they are interchangeable they're like the same size they fit on the same struts even though there's differences in those struts between the 120 and the 150 those most common numbers we'd use are really it comes down to 350s and 352s okay there is some other ones you know you can get even higher for heavier you know 318s and whatever but i'm just talking they're the five most common springs if i did uh 20 lift kits this week on prados I just about put my money on. Now, this is excluding VXs, right? Excluding anything with KDSS, I should say, to be clear. KDS part numbers, KDSS, you can source some of the same numbers, not all of them. If you're using monotubes, you can even use the 120 coils because you can adjust the spring seat height, but I don't want to get too complicated. It was meant to be KISS. Keep it simple, stupid again, right? So, give you an idea, right? On the 120s, if you've got all your bull bar and your winch and your brush bars and your bash plates and your dual batteries and your light bars and your spotlights and your heavy duty side steps and all these things that just keep adding more weight to the front, I'm probably just going to suggest a 150 front spring. At the end of the day, the 150 spring, it's for a slightly bigger, heavier car, bull bars, whatever. So wouldn't it make sense to you to use the, the 150 coil spring at the front to support that weight and for it to handle right? Yes, well, that's what we do. It's just the same as in a 150. If you've got a 150 and you want to keep that drive and handling 100% awesome, so you're not going to put a bull bar on, like what we've done on a couple of the Prados, and a lot of people have done, really. 
Um, and it does make, I drive a lot of Pratos and, and they, the ones that drive the best are the ones obviously with the right suspension, but one of the biggest factors is not having that big heavy bull bar up front there, okay? So, and or having the suspension set up right to suit that. So if you've got a 150 and you're not putting a bull bar, we may then select out of the 120 coil springs because remember they were for a lighter vehicle. So they were for a 120 maybe usually with a bull bar. So a 150 without a bull bar, that spring suits fairly well. Just, you know, and vice versa. So it can go either way. So I know, am I not having you too much so far? If you've got KDSS in the 150 that is, right? So only the 150 coil springs are available in the KDSS part numbers, right? And I can't remember what they are. So, you know, it's like, you know, uh, what is it? I, I can't remember. It's on the tip of my tongue. Yes, the rear is 722, 724, 726. What are the fronts? Anyway, I can't think of it at the moment, so it doesn't matter, right? But the point is, there's a different number that's basically the same spring, but they're five mil different at each side. So we're not talking about those in this video. What we're talking about is the general numbers to keep it simple. Now, the 300, now, one of the biggest variables as well is what engine have you got? If it's a 120 or a 150, particularly the 120, because there's more 120s with V6s because they weren't as unpopular as they were in recent times. So in the 120, it's quite more common that you'll find a V6. The V6 engine, the alloy engine, is a fair bit lighter than a diesel. So when selecting your front coil springs, the key thing you need to remember or know, is it a diesel or is it a petrol, okay? Now the 1KZ and the 1KD, not a big difference. The 1KD I think is a little bit heavier, but not a big difference. The V6 is a lot lighter. I'll go as far as to say it's going to give you about 20 mil more lift taking the same spring out of a diesel and putting it in a petrol. You're going to be too high. You're going to be. It is quite hard to keep the V6 low enough, right? So I'm going to suggest coils in a 120 V6 uh, along the lines of sometimes without a bull bar, it's going to be a 296, one of those odd ones. But they're going to be mainly 300s is probably going to be most vehicles and 302s if you've got... Um, bull bars and winches, not too much weight. Say an alloy bar with a winch or just an ARB bull bar without a winch, you'll probably be 302. Now, if you want to be crazy high, then you're going to go for the 314. That'd be more of what we're going to use on a 120 with a steel bull bar, not too much other weight. But if the 120 had a steel bull bar, a winch, a bash plate, brush bars, and all this extra weight, we're probably just going to go straight over to the 150 coil, like a 350 or a 352, okay? A little bit heavier, they just retain the weight better. In my opinion, they drive better as well, having that coil on the heavier vehicle. It's about, you know, selecting the right springs, you know. All the talk about, ah, oh, your shocks and struts are gonna be matched to your coils. It's not quite like that, but look, you know, you wanna get it pretty close to right and making different decisions and selecting the right springs sometimes works better. Um, in the 150 Prado with a bull bar, so this is probably one of the common ones now these days. There's a lot of 150s around. They've been out since 09. It's 2020 now. Basically the same suspension. I'll say basically, but it is basically pretty much the, all the same. The most common spring you're going to use if you've got if you've got a steel bull bar and you don't have any other accessories, or maybe a steel bull bar and a dual battery sort of a touring vehicle you're probably going to want a 350 in the front of that 150. It's easy to remember, isn't it? A 350 and a 150. If you've got a winch, or if you've got, you know, you've got your bull bar already, you've got your dual batteries, but if you add a few things like some lights and a bash plate, or a winch, or any of that, then you probably want to go to the 352. It's five mil longer, it's going to give you about 10 mil. Now again, if you're using the monotube Dobinson shocks, you can adjust that spring seal. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying you can do it yourself. You may need to take it to someone. Or you may need to understand how to do it. You need to take the weight off the coil. There's a procedure. We'll probably have that in another video at some stage, which is why you should be subscribed with the bell on so you don't miss it. Make sure you got that bell on, guys. Um, so that pretty well covers it. I hope I've mentioned your vehicle. I've gone through all the common ones. I'll go through it again just quickly backwards. So the most common ones, the 150 Prado, if you've got no bull bar, okay, if you haven't got a bull bar and you want to keep it nice, you're probably going to use something like going back to a 120 coil spring. You're going to use probably a 300 or a 302, okay, on a 150 without, you know, you might have dual batteries, you might have a bash plate, not too much. Uh, it depends, we don't have to worry about it too much if we're using the monotubes. Again, we can adjust it to tweak that height, but um, quite commonly, if it's a touring height you're after, sort of maybe closer to the 30 mil, uh, the 300, 
from the 120 is the core that you put in the 150 if it's got no bull bar. If you still want 50 mil lift, even though you've got no bull bar, you're gonna want a 302. Put a 302 in there, you get 40 to 50 mil lift usually. Don't hold me to these heights. Springs are springs, cars are cars. It varies a lot, usually a little bit. I'm gonna say a lot to scare you, okay? It's not as simple as it sounds. I had someone this morning actually contact me in a text message. They had previously inquired about suspension, obviously didn't like me or something for whatever reason, but went elsewhere and got their suspension. Now he's not happy that, well, he, he's maybe a bit confused more than anything, but it seems he's not entirely satisfied, I suppose is the word to use, with his purchase elsewhere because he believes he's only got 30 mil lift. So he shoot me a text going, hey, you know what's going on here? And I sort of said, well, mate, you know, I'm sort of thinking, is that fair? You inquire with me, I'll give you the information. We have the phone call, whatever. Then you go and buy it elsewhere, and then you come to me to ask, don't do that, don't do that, okay? So inquire with me, buy from me, and then inquire with me afterwards, or inquire with me, Go. that's fine, go elsewhere, but that's why I'm doing the videos to save time. The information's here to help you make the right decision, then you can blame yourself instead of any of us. Now, he also said that we've both got a very good reputation, so that's fine and good and well, no problem there, but I hope you understand, if you've gone that way, you need to talk to that person. He then proceeded to send me some uh, information through about heights and measurements, which a lot of them didn't make sense. When you do that, you need to include your wheel size, specific vehicle information, 120, 150, VX, it's got 18 inch wheels. The measurements need to be good. I don't do measurements from the middle of the wheel because, oh, well, where's the middle? Is it about there? Too hard, just do the bottom of the rim to the guard in a direct line, straight up and down, as straight as you can get it, and make sure you haven't got your head too sideways because you might not get it straight up and down, right? It's really important that the measurements are right. But the numbers he gave me didn't make a lot of sense and I sort of thought it wasn't too bad. It's actually a bit high at the back, which is all right. And it's not bad at the front. I'll, I'll just write, look, it's fine. So this is not about that. It's just to help you guys select the right things. But I just wanted to give you that little story for the wise people that hung around to get the full information so we understand we're on the same page. And I'm gonna remind you just quickly before I give you a bit more information, the times to contact me. I only work school hours. I don't like calls or contact in the afternoon. I'm already busy getting what happened in the morning done. You know, like if uh, five people contacting me about injectors or suspension, I'm getting all that organized, right? That's what happens throughout the day. So please hit me up in the morning. I understand if you're in WA, it's a bit harder. So you need to text me anything from 7 a.m. because it's 9 a.m. here and that'll change with daylight saving. It gets messy, I know. But just do the best you can to try and keep it in the morning if you can and early in the week. Mondays is ideal parts day if you want to order suspension injectors, the big front engine kit, the wheel bearings, whatever it is, right? Now, so we've covered the 150 without a bull bar. We're talking the 300s and the 302s. We've covered the 150 with a steel bull bar. We're talking 350s. If you've got a winch and a bit of extra weight and you want every last millimetre, you're going 352s. I recommend sticking to as close as possible as to 40 mil on the front of either the 120 or 150 Prado. That's what I recommend. You don't need all these other bits and pieces, suspension components changed. You'll get your wheel alignment within spec or close enough. As long as you can keep it even both sides, it'll drive beautiful. You don't need all these arms and bits and adjustable this and that and sway bar link pins and disconnect this and that. All you need is your struts, your sh springs, your shockers, Butter boom, keep it close to a reliable Toyota as possible. Back to the 120 in case we didn't get it right the first time. If you haven't got a bull bar or anything like that, which there's not many 120s left around without a bull bar that want to do a lift kit, that's where you're going to be talking, depending what engine, V6 or diesel, 296s or 300s. These are the sort of ones where we're going to have to talk about on the phone. So once you've paid for your kit, so do your text, let me know what you need, pay for it. Then we're gonna talk on the phone to confirm. These videos are designed so that it's gonna help you make a decision. Maybe we'll just have a quick call for five minutes and say, yeah, I'm, I'm torn between this and this, what do you reckon? And I'm also gonna have this conversation if I need to with my expert contacts in Dobinson's that have also got a lot of experience. So then we've got your opinion from watching the videos and the explanation and the homework you've done. We've got my experience and we've also got their experience. So it's a three-way bet. We're gonna get your satisfaction right the first time to the best of our ability. But please understand it is springs, it is suspension. 90% of the time everything works out. Every now and then uh, you step in a, uh, a landmine, you know? <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna say something else, but oh, I better not, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, so back to the 120, no bull bar, you know, the not common, let's not talk about it. Let's go to the 120 with a bull bar. If it's fairly light and alloy bull bar, we're gonna be talking 
302s. If you've got a steel bull bar, yeah, and nothing else, probably 302s. If you've got a steel bull bar and a little bit extra weight, maybe a winch or batteries and you're not too worried about the height, you could go for 314s. But if you've got a lot of weight, just go to those 150 coils, the 350s or the 352s for ultimate. The difference between the 350 and 352, five millimeters in the spring height, which gives you 10 at your wheels. We've explained that in other videos, but I'll quickly tell you now for the wise people that hung around, whatever you do at your suspension at your spring position is gonna give you approximately double at your wheel, okay? I'm not gonna explain it in too much detail in this video. It's probably in other videos, but believe me, whatever you do, Halfway along your suspension arm, halfway along that pivot point, is going to double it by the time it gets out to the wheel. There you go. I pretty much explained it already just in that comment. So hopefully that's helped, guys. If you've got something like that, please give us the thumbs up. Um, I'm doing the best I can trying to explain it all to you. Uh, if you need suspension, please. Look, you can shoot me a text any morning you like, really, um, and just say, look, I'm interested in the Dominson suspension, but please understand... I am armed and ready for action Monday morning from 8 o'clock, okay? I'm ready to respond to the text. I'm ready to send you the video that's relevant. You need to be ready to watch it. If you want to watch videos over the weekend, then feel free to inquire Monday, Tuesday, and then I'll send you the links to the videos. You can watch them over the next weekend, then hit me again the next Monday. Please don't hit me up Friday afternoon for anything. You know what? The last any business or company wants is Friday afternoon jobs, right? And you know what Friday afternoon jobs are like? And once again, please forgive me if I miss your message or I get swamped and yours gets buried. Please come back to me again, depending on urgency, later the same day. You know, like if you've done it at 8, try again at 11. If it's not that urgent, the next morning. If it's really not that urgent, the next Monday morning. And if it's really not that urgent, yeah, just Monday mornings are the go. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your support. Hope you're all doing well. And bada bing, bada boom. We're out of here. See ya.